Just Alster is a local channel on YouTube showing videos of Alster and the surrounding area. Please share, recommend, like and subscribe to the channel to see more local videos. Thank you. The wind today very challenging. They'll be putting their left aid rods hard down. Well, the aid the rods there. In order to uh, counter the wind. And they have all very quickly in the strong wind. The wind attack is so challenging that we will not be able to land back on. So this is your last chance to see them close up. Takes to all different colours. We'll be talking about the colours as we go on. The one that's about to take off now, the yellow one, is in the 1930s RAF training colours. When wartime came, they take to the upper surfaces in camouflage. The yellow on the upper side, camouflage on the top. So the 3B, which is also camouflage, and it's blue on the underside, and then it has the tips painted red which was at the time the designated colour for an unmanned aerial vehicle. Those that are not painted in camouflage are those that are sold on to civilian clubs after the Second World War and were then painted in the colours of the Odin's choice. This is the team of the Haviland Moth Club, which is a club that promotes the Maintenance, preservation, and flying of these wonderful machines. We've been going since 1975. Attack formation for attacking a bomber that had no fighter escort. Because if you had eight machine guns on a fighter, you could concentrate 24 guns onto the same target. And that also means that your wingmen are focusing on the leader, and they do not have a chance to spot the enemy coming at them if they've got fighter escort. So it was quickly abandoned in the early stages of the Battle of Britain. That is a very icy downwind. It's going to be much slower going from right to left. And you can just see how difficult it is. Now, these guys are highly experienced pilots. They are indeed. It's such a light wing loading on these aircraft. It's uh, 244 square feet, so about one and a half times the size of any aircraft you might hire from your local flying club. Look at them, bouncing around like a load of crisp packets in the wind. They are laying off a considerable amount too for uh, that wind, which is, it's not the same down here as it is up there. It backs off considerably. But it's from the clouds. They're having to go and point themselves slightly our direction. Much better. And you just see how light those aircraft are and how difficult it is to maintain that formation. But they are doing it extremely well under these, uh, under these conditions. Indeed, these are some of the most experienced pilots in the country. They typically have three times the number of flying hours that a um, Red Arrows pilot has. Obviously, of course, the Reds have had a lot of experience on the fast jets. But it's very, very difficult to do this close formation in something so light, such a light, light wing loading. That is a scene from World War One, Isn't it just? I'd like to say about the last three, um, not to be left out, leaving out is David's sister, who is another Breaking now. Another turn and charge towards each other. Like a pair of dueling knights, knights in shining time moss. Breaking now. There's David's sister, the man who flew to Australia, bring up the rear with a half human eight. This is an aerobatic flourish to finish it off. Now the teams will form themselves into two long lines for the multi-cross. And this time they don't have just one aircraft to avoid, they have between four and five. And so all fold a position where you know they're going to cross and then snap as they pass that spot. Here they come. into one long line for their final fly past. If you've enjoyed what they've done, please give them a big wave. They will really appreciate that. They've got to be here happy, but they, this one should be waving back. You 